This video has a special bonus topic at the end of it that I hope that for those who want to stick around that they really resonate and get something good out of that special segment. But let's go ahead and jump into this video as quickly as possible because there's a lot to talk about. And I'm sure by now that you've heard the news. But if you haven't, the TLDR is the FTC court against Microsoft, the court case against Microsoft. Sony actually had redacted documents and those redacted documents really weren't that well redacted and we've actually learned a lot of information about them and as a software developer myself i really want to say one thing video games are a freaking miracle let's break it down numbers wise right because we're talking about so much money it's really hard to quantify what is truly happening the big takeaway is sony spent around 230 million dollars to develop just one game now this does not include the marketing costs just the development costs and from what we see in terms of marketing like if we just look at movies the movie industry is an example movies marketing budget usually is the exact same around price around what they cost to make the movie and if we use that same kind of concept for gaming you could see that sony easily spends around a half a billion dollars on making one game now obviously these are a little bit estimate in this video but at the end of the day it's so much money it really doesn't matter if we're off by just a couple of million dollars this is ridiculous so first and foremost i don't care whose team you're on this is impressive and my first thought yesterday was weirdly a feeling of guilt for not supporting these games more my second thought out of the gate is in an era of free to play mtx driven multiplayer streamer or perhaps streamer drama focused gaming you know this culture that has developed the fact that sony is still willing to make these kind of games should be commended this should be applauded this is not a negative thing this isn't even a console war thing and i respect them for doing that even though as somebody who considers themselves console agnostic for those of you who don't know i have one ps5 and i have like five xboxes so needless to say you can you can call me an xbox if you want i don't necessarily see that i just find that i like the xbox ecosystem personally preferably better over the sony even though i use my sony for uh in this case final fantasy 16 but that's nothing that we need to relitigate here now for those out there i get those who will claim that they want these kind of games. Like obviously, if you take Elden Ring as an example, this obviously ends up being kind of something where Elden Ring is the exception rather than the rule because a lot of gamers will talk, but in terms of the numbers, the finances, who buys these games, we've seen that continue to shrink time and time again. But like I said, Elden Ring is a great exception to the rule of what we're seeing in the industry. And that's why it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of balls, really, uh, for somebody who, who wants to put this kind of money on the table uh, and risk this kind of money, because this is one reason why I feel that the indie scene has really exploded as of late, because no matter how many times people tell me that modern game development has gotten easier, the numbers on all of this reflect in a completely different story. Plus, the markets have truly changed. So we're talking about a generational shift, a generational divide. Like for me, I spend money on games and I make sure my kids understand the cost of video games because I see the problem of the free to play hook in training an entire generation on, oh wait, you actually have to buy this game out of the box? Like that seems a little bit weird. And because of that, I think we've seen, you know, purchasing changes uh, occur market-wide, industry-wide, but that's another subject probably for another video. Anyway, the real reason I see in this, the reason that I find, um, you know, when it comes to these development factors, when people make that argument that game development is, it's easier, it's cheaper. I think they forget to factor in the concept of risk. You put this money up and there's a risk that it doesn't perform. And so we see a lot of these companies lean more into safety what is going to perform what is the demand and so you end up feeling like we get a lot of cookie cutter kind of concepts and it takes somebody willing like a nintendo like a sony and you might not agree but even i see microsoft doing these things and their risk in and of itself is purchasing these games and the, the talent just like <laughs> drops off the face of the planet having been paid a 
huge sum of money for their stocks and for their hard work, which should be commended. I would love to somebody one day to hand me a big old check for the hard work that I do and make other people rich, right? That's the dream. Who knows if it will ever happen? I'll let you guys know if that ever does. If you ever start seeing me stream a, a lot, then you know that, oh man, he got his bag. He's good to go. Anyway, um, in this case, to answer the question of this video, did Sony mess up? Well, yes, they messed up with these documents 100%, but I do feel like it's in the favor of gamers because seeing this, for me, helps me understand really what it takes for them to make this kind of thing happen. We've always been talking about these things in more ethereal terms. We feel like they're spending an ins insane amount of money. We feel like these games, like I've always respected Sony because they will delay a game until it's ready so that that way they've built up a reputation of delivering high quality content and so they've earned the reputation that they had and that reputation costs them a lot of money and it takes a lot of time to develop both the trust and the reputation that they've given us but in this case we can actually now start to see the real numbers now you know people are probably already pissed at me because this is the internet the fact is that when Sony's spending money to keep games off of Xbox, that should not be applauded. That should not be celebrated. That in and of itself, I think, is bad for gaming overall because it's a Sony play. It's an exclusivity play. It's in a way a monopoly play. But when they do these kind of things, those are things that should not be celebrated. But the fact that they are willing to first party wise invest these this money and take these risks, that's that's a different subject. And we can we can look at things not necessarily as a whole, we can actually break it down and say, these things that they do are good and should be celebrated. These things should be called into question. We should have these hard conversations. We should, you know, like, you know, champion change, for example, cross play, cross save. Like that is a pro gamer move. That's something that should be celebrated, should be committed. A player should not necessarily be stuck in any one spot. That rather, they should be able to kind of take their toys and, and move if for some reason these companies do something silly. And both Sony, Microsoft, Hell Nintendo have always and have a history of sometimes you get this hubris where they screw over gamers for their own selfish desires. And we should fight to avoid those kind of things. And, you know, cross play, cross safe is a feature like that. It is a pro gamer feature, not a pro platform feature. And I'm a pro gamer first kind of gamer. Now, in this case, I want to say two things about uh, some additional things that came out from the FTC filings uh, yesterday. And as they get ready to kind of wrap up, uh, we'll see what ultimately happens. But uh, the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, uh, he comes out and he takes the stand and he talks about how he doesn't love exclusives. He doesn't feel like that's a good point of the industry. And I, and I do believe him. He goes on to say that being that they don't have enough stake in the industry, they really can't set those, those terms. And it really is up to Sony uh, to make those changes. And I would honestly say, Nintendo as well. Nintendo sells hardware because that's where you get Nintendo games. And at some point, I do wonder if that falls off a cliff because we again talking about the generational divide. My kids have Nintendos. Clearly, everybody bought a Switch. We're all looking forward to the next one. So it couldn't, you know, be 100 years from now or 200 years. Who knows in that regards? But exclusivity will be a factor of like, do I really want to just buy that system for that one game that has a lot of expense driven into it. And cloud probably has a huge potential to kind of disrupt the industry here in the next, you know, 10 years, so to speak. But anyway, he takes a stand, talks about it. And I do believe that his points are driven by one of two reasons. Either they're not in first place. We've seen Microsoft kind of get ahead of themselves. And that's one of the things that, why competition's good. With their things that they were trying to do with the Xbox One, while at the same time, cloud compute, I think is a, an important thing to do cloud compute. You have to have internet. Um, the fact is, is that there is competition and competition gives you and me a choice. And that's why I'm all for giving players choice. And that's why I think that in the industry in and of itself, we have that ability and it's important to have two forces fighting against each other. So we, the gamers can win uh, in terms of games, services, features, and things like that. But I, I, it, it, they could have this stance because they're not in first place. And it's like, as soon as they got in first place, then maybe they changed their tune. I, I don't think that's the case because I think also Microsoft from a historical perspective is a software company. Uh, they want to put their software on everything, everywhere. And this is unlike Apple, who is it's Apple hardware, it's Apple software. It's, you know, that's their ecosystem. They have a lockdown ecosystem. And I don't think that's essentially as a software developer who's been spending more time in Linux as of late, like I appreciate 
the features and the open source and the, the, what we can do together, uh, you know, in terms of sharing knowledge and sharing these kind of things. But that's another thing for another litigation for another day. My final thought before we get to the bonus topic is this could really go either way, but I do feel like Xbox is going to win this case. Uh, could obviously be wrong. Time is going to tell, and this is going to seem like it's going to wrap up pretty soonly. Um, but lots of really good info here, especially for someone like me who's console agnostic. I have to say that this, I've been just eating this up and been uh, consuming all the different uh, talking points and talking heads about this. And I figured I'd weigh in as a software dev and give you guys my thoughts uh, here today. But that wraps up the video game part of this. And if you've sticking around this long, welcome to the bonus topic. You were truly amazing. I don't know if I introduced myself, but my name's Brian. I'm a dad. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm a you know, gamer PC, PlayStation, Xbox. And uh, today I want to talk to you guys about being a man. I want you today to be a man. I want you to swallow the frog. That means do the hardest thing that you've been putting off first. So stop putting off the things that you've been putting off in this case. And I'm going to join you in this quest. I have some things around the house that I need to do for my wife. The honey do list. Here I come. It is calling me. So that's what I'm going to focus in and do today. But I want you to step up and I want you to knock off a task that you've been putting off that is on your to do list, whether you're married or you're single. And I want you to get that done today. And then I want you to see how that makes you feel. I want to see how that resonates with you. And that, and I think in and of itself is one of the things that like, as much as I love gaming, um, you know, like it's, it's a really good thing. Sometimes it has the ability to over, you know, consume our time and we end up putting off things that otherwise doing them would actually bring us some joy, would actually bring us some balance into our brain chemistry. And so I want to like challenge you. Cause like one of the things is, is especially like I see it in a lot is that I think men resonate they respond to a challenge so like if you're a writer i want you to write something today it just doesn't need to be the book it could just be a sentence it could be a paragraph if you're like if you're doing something around that you got like you know hey i need to change out the air filter like it doesn't have to be hard hell i make your bed do something that you've been putting off and see how that makes it makes you feel and i'm gonna bet it's gonna make you feel a lot better than yelling at somebody over on Twitter or somebody in the comment section. I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna put it out there. You can let me know if I'm right or wrong or how it makes you feel, but I do appreciate you if you stuck around for the bonus topic in today's video. Love you, love your faces. Hopefully you have a wonderful freaking day. Hopefully you get some things done. Appreciate you being here and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. But until then, take care.